So um, where do I begin? Um, the impetus of all of this is the, the backstory is um, in 2015, my mother was diagnosed with frontotemporal dementia. My drinking got bad then. I was already drinking too much. You know, a gay actor in West Hollywood, it's a playground. Um, I was already drinking too much, but it was still fun and I was really good at it. And then it escalated uh, starting in 2015 and it got worse and worse and worse. And it, um, I was thinking this morning, one of the only good things that did not seem good at the time during COVID was COVID, I believe, got me to rock bottom quicker. Because of the situation, because of being in LA during COVID, um, all and being an actor and not working, and I drank. I drank with my friends, and um, you know, when the outdoor restaurants and bars opened up, we drank, and it, it gave me an excuse to keep drinking. And um, I mean, there were people during COVID that drank that normally didn't drink, and it just it, the only thing I can think of is that COVID got me there quicker. And um, and uh, my bright light during all of this was my friend Carol Cook. Um, she was uh, 90, uh, all three days shy of 99 when she passed away in 2023, you know, so two generations older than me, if not more. And, but she, we were the, the dearest of friends and um, she saw, um, she saw my struggle and she knew that I was hurting. And she also, she knew my mother and she, um, we were already very close, but when my mom got sick, we got even closer. Cut to January of 2023, uh, Carol passes away. Uh, and um, I went on a bit of a, a two week bender, I, I call it, and uh, really hit rock bottom. Um, and it was the lowest I'd ever been, but it was the rock bottom that got me to where I am today. And um, I decided that it was time to um, make a shift. I had to, I, 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 there was no way that I was going to be able to survive going in the direction that I was going. It was, it was just, it was nothing about it was sustainable mentally, physically, emotionally. There was nothing about it that was, um, that was beneficial to me. And uh, I knew that it was going to be difficult, but I knew that if I started to let light in, that's the, that's the word that I use. And I started to clear the debris, then I was going to be able to find myself again, hopefully. I actually didn't even know that I was going to be able to find myself. I just knew that I was going to survive. I knew that I was going to live. Um, I didn't know it was going to be this wonderful. So I started to clear the debris and I was very fortunate. I, I tell people when I tell my story, I am so fortunate that alcohol was the biggest piece of debris for me because it was so apparent. It was very, very clear that alcohol was, was what I was leaning into and it was not helping, it was only hurting. So I stopped drinking. So when I tell my story, I say I'm sober from alcohol. Sobriety means different things to different people. My sobriety means I'm sober from alcohol. And I, I say this, not to go into great detail because it is touched on in the play, but psilocybin and mushroom therapy has been a, has been a great help to me. Um, and some people don't consider that sobriety. Uh, I do. And um, so uh, I started the journey towards sobriety and I quit drinking and um, knew that if I just kept forward, I could eventually, hopefully um, find peace. And then my mother died. And the timing of it was wild, but it was something I had always sort of predicted. I kind of always knew that Carol and my mother would exit I, my biggest fear was that they would exit at the same time and I would be pulled. Um, but it was a few months later, my mother passed and that's when my journey really began. And what had, what happened was that eventually led to writing of the play is I started to believe in things again. Uh, before my mom got sick, I believed in everything. I mean, that's what brought me to LA. I was a dreamer and I dreamed huge, big dreams and I was achieving them. And um, then mom got sick and I started drinking and I stopped. I didn't believe in anything. I didn't believe, um, uh, basically I was kind of like, well, if that could happen to my mother, who was an incredible human being, what are we even doing here? What does this mean? Well, my, I started to believe in things again. And my mother and Carol started showing up to me. They started showing up in ways um, that were unbelievable. And um, I started to experience what I call magic. And I love the word magic. Some people roll their eyes at it, but I love the word magic because it is a very accessible word to everyone. It's accessible and it can mean all sorts of things, but 
to me, it's, it's, it's joy that we can't explain. And it gives me chills talking about it, but it's joy that we can't explain. And I started to experience that again. And what I realized was, you know, when my mom got sick, I lost her. She, she had a, a brain disease that, uh, that she, even though she was living, she went away and she started to come back to me. And um, I was experiencing all of these truths and all of these epiphanies and um, I wanted to share it. And I didn't know how it was going to look. I didn't know if it was a book. I didn't know if it was a, a, a telling of a story for someone else to write and me to present, but I knew that I had to share it. it I, I've been so passionate about this magic that was coming into my life. And as I was saying um, earlier, I spent the winter in New York. I was pulled to New York uh, spiritually. I um, feel as though, know as though that Carol pulled me to New York. That's where she started back in the fifties. And I told my family, I was like, y'all are gonna think I'm crazy, but I gotta go to New York. I don't know what it is, but I have to go to New York and I have to go um, experience and, and figure out what it is that's, that's um, happening to me spiritually and creatively. I, I got to New York January 15th. I rented an apartment and uh, January 19th, this idea of this play came to me a one man show, a solo show, me telling my truth. The beautiful thing and the fun thing and the crazy thing about the show is that I don't make anything up. It's, it's poetically told, but everything that I share on stage and it's an adventure is um, true. So I get to New York and I knew that I was gonna share all of these good things that were happening to me. I knew that I was gonna share with people that I got rid of debris and for me it was alcohol and I started to see light again. And I found my mother and I found hope again and I found Carol. I knew that I was gonna share the good things but what I didn't realize is that in order to make my message stronger and clearer and louder, I had to share the bad things. And that's what happened on January 19th. And the name of the play is Carol Cook Died for My Sins. And it's a very irreverent and provocative title. Some people don't love the title. I, I encourage them to come see the play. I, I realize that in order for me to allow these truths that I'm learning in my life regarding my story to land and to give people hope, I have to tell where it started. So I got the idea, well, why don't I just tell what happened when Carol died? I went cuckoo. I went on a West Hollywood bender to every freaking bar <laughs> that there, there was. And I, I made my playground turned into a, a prison. And so I thought, well, gosh, if I can just get on stage and tell that truth, if I'm willing to get on stage and tell what that looked like, then the magic is going to land. And my biggest thing is, is as, I, as I talk about this play, which I'm clearly very passionate about, and you can interject when you'd like. Um, my biggest thing is, is that I'm not claiming to have the answer. I'm not claiming to be a poster child regarding sobriety. I'm not claiming to be a poster child regarding sobriety from alcohol. I'm claiming to state from my experience that no matter where you are and how dark it feels, you don't have to stay there. That's, that's, the, that's the message that I wanna share with people because it was, um, it was extremely dark where I was and to the outside looking in, not everyone realized how, dark. I don't think anyone fully realized how dark it was, but from where I was sitting, I couldn't see my hand in front of my face. And now I'm doing a play back in LA at a theater that Carol spent a lot of time in. And I get to celebrate Carol's story, which is a brilliant story on its own, my mother's story and my story. And um, I tell it well. <laughs>